guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Falcor's Mighty Adventures. Uh, last time we talked a little bit about... Wait, before I start, beer check. I don't know if you're noticing that. I'm getting a mustache thing going on here. Yeah, I've been through this before. What happens is, uh, basically, I get a goatee and nothing else grows. Uh, maybe a little here, like a line. I look ridiculous. And I don't look good in a goatee. <laughs> so... Um, so this has happened like last time when I lost all my hair. I lost all my hair twice. Once uh, in the middle of the treatment, once in the, in the end, which is now. And uh, it looks terrible. I mean, like people, <laughs> even the nurses and doctors would make fun of me and be like, you know, there are, there are a, a, a few people in this world that can pull off a mustache and you're not one of them. <laughs> and I'm like, God damn it, have I not enough things on my plate? <laughs> So um, please uh, vote if you want me to shave it or not. But let me let me tell you why I'm asking you, because some people want to see a natural progression of how my hair grows back, and some people don't care. <laughs> so I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna put a comment on this video, and anyone who watches it, just comment on that comment, reply, and uh, and tell me uh, shave or don't shave. So if, if you put shave, it means that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to like trim it a little so that it doesn't look so obvious. And, you know, it's going to grow more uniformly. Uh, while if you say don't shave, then... Uh, sorry, if you say shave, uh, yeah, don't shave, then it's going to grow naturally. So whichever one you want, really, I don't mind. Uh, there's literally no one who's seeing me. <laughs> uh, only my family. I can't go outside. Uh, and, and the only people watching are, <laughs> I guess, people that see me on YouTube. So, I don't mind really. Plus, you know my motto, be brave and don't hide. <laughs> don't, don't be weak. Be like Falcor. Um, today I woke up with slight temperature again. It just goes to show what, what I said earlier. These things, like, it's so volatile. Like, one moment you're feeling perfect, the next day you wake up with a headache. I don't even know what I did wrong. I don't know what's going on with me. I have this sort of pressure in my head. Uh, I don't know if this is, has been scientifically proven, but you know how they say uh, different pressure outside due to climate can affect your, uh, let's say, your, your, uh, your body and you, know, you can get headaches or you feel like kind of, uh, maybe it affects your blood pressure or something, I don't know. But uh, I have a feeling that it could be that. Maybe it's some sort of residual uh, infection thing going on in my throat although it doesn't hurt at all I'm still wearing the neck thing just in case so yeah I, I woke up with 37 4 and I'm like god damn it and then a few hours later it was still 37 4 then I took a nap because naps seemed to really help me and uh, luckily it went down to 36 9 but you know maybe it could be anything it could be the fact that i i slept with the window open slightly so that i get fresh air and that sort of maybe cooled my body i mean really these things like i said they're they're uh they're they're totally fluctuating all the time it's really annoying but anyway today we're gonna have a spooky spooky story day i don't know if you guys watch horror movies uh, it's amazing what people, what directors and writers go through <laughs> trying to think of a new thing that could be scary. <laughs> when all you have to do is look at the real world, that's scary enough. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you a horror story now. Uh, when, so, okay, it's part of chemo, basically. Uh, maybe two weeks or three weeks in, when just after telling me that I was a high-risk uh, patient, uh, they told me that they're like, uh, Mr. Farkas, we're going to have to do something that's kind of scary, but I promise everything's going to be all right. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, who hired you for uh, best actor? <laughs> because I knew immediately that that person was nervous as hell. <laughs> and uh, she, she's like, it's okay. We do this all the time. In fact, we're going to have to do this several times along the treatment. And I'm like, well, what is it? And then they're like, it's very simple. We're just going to have to take this tiny little needle, and it's not tiny, <laughs> let me just tell you. 
this, this tiny little needle. I'm just going to have to pinch you in your back just a little bit and uh, take, a, take a sample of your spinal fluid and inject some chemotherapy in there. You, you, would that be okay with you? <laughs> I'm like, you're kidding me, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we're going to have to do this. And I'm like, well, you're going to have to put me down because that's fucking crazy. No, that's nice. Hell yeah, that's good. Uh, you're going to have to put me down. <laughs> you're going to have to like uh, do, you know, give me some strong anesthetics. And they're like, well, I mean, we could do that, but I mean, this really isn't necessary. Like, you can do this awake. We're going to give you some really hard, really strong local anesthetics, so you're not going to feel anything. Heard that before. <laughs> uh, um, so trust me, everything's going to be okay. And I'm like, well, I, we're going to be brave, you know. So I said, sure, let's do it. And I'm like, when? And they're like, like now. We're going to do it now. <laughs> And my brother uh, had already had already arrived, obviously. So, um, so I'm like, I'm like, uh, little brother, uh, I, I'm gonna need you for this. Uh, I'm really gonna need you for this because my bigger brother, uh, you know, this was before the pandemic. My my bigger brother was working at this time, and I know I could have asked him to come over, but that, I think that's what my little brother came for. You know, he he came to to accompany me when nobody else can, and he he didn't have to work or anything like that. You know. So it was like, it was perfect. So I told him, I'm like, I need you. I need you here. Like this, I'm going through some scary stuff and, and I'm freaking out here. And I was because there's one thing I fear physically. Let's say when it comes to the body, there's, th there's this one thing that I fear more than anything else, which is something happening to my spinal cord. Like uh, it just scares the crap out of me. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm one of those people that if you talk about spinal injuries for too long, uh, I, I might like, I might f not faint, but my blood pressure will go down to a point where I'm like puking or something. Um, I, and I know I'm not the only one. This, this is like pretty common. Have you, in fact, in fact, I've seen, I've seen, uh, people, uh, faint in class when talking about, uh, spinal injuries and, uh, anyway, I didn't faint in class, but, but listen to the rest of the story. <laughs> So uh, my brother came and, I, and he like came out in like 15 minutes he was here and uh, and three doctors come in and three doctors come in it was uh, a male and two female doctors and they're like we're here to uh, do this and I'm like you're not even going to take me to a, a surgery room or anything and they're like no we're going to do it right here. <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, how do, how, what, what position do you want me to be? Like, do I just lay on my back? I thought you had to like lay on your back. It's the most stable position, right? And they're like, no, you're gonna have to sit, feet touching the ground, uh, on like the side of your bed. We're gonna bring the rolling table that you have, because every room has a, a table which you use for, which you use for uh, uh, eating. It's a, it's a table that sort of can go on top of your bed. And, you know, you, you don't need to get up to eat. You just eat there in bed, like breakfast in bed, you know. Oh, man, we're getting good. Um, and what happened was, uh, the, since the, the table had wheels on it, it was annoyingly unstable. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God damn it. Like, <laughs> this thing is moving and they're going to put something in my back and this thing is going to move and I'm going to lose my my ability to walk or something and then and i'm like oh god and luckily my brother was there and he's like i'm gonna hold it i'm gonna sit here uh, against you uh, and and i'm gonna push the table towards you and it's gonna like uh, get stuck against the bed and that way it's gonna be stable and the genius he nailed it it worked perfectly uh, absolutely perfectly worked and it's it got stable and luckily you know nothing happened one of the doctors' his only job was to sort of talk to me. She didn't do anything else, just talk, try to distract me. But we soon realized that my brother did a better job with that. She was good, but my brother was better at sort of distracting me. He would just talk to me about what he's doing in World of Warcraft. Now, what they do is you sit in that position with your arms forward, you know, like a brace position. And they don't show you the needle. And luckily, I would not see... I would not, I would not see the needle until the, until the very end, until the last 
one of these stabby stabbies that I had. Uh, so my recommendation, this was the best idea I ever had, don't look at the needle, don't look at it. Don't look at any tools. When you see the, the, the medics go behind you, the, do the doctors, uh, they go behind you for a reason. Uh, they want to hide this from you. They want to hide the, the gore, and so they don't show you the needle. And I don't know if, if you don't want to know how big that needle is, uh, skip. <laughs> skip to maybe 10 seconds in the future. All right? Skip. The needle is, I shit you not, this big and this thick. So let me just show you. Like maybe a centimeter, a little less than a centimeter thick, and this, this long. And maybe it's even longer. Maybe I got traumatized. <laughs> But that, they stab that thing. First, first they add the anesthetics and you don't feel, you really like, it numbs, it numbs things out completely. It numbs things out um, on your skin and, and, uh, and in your muscles. It doesn't numb the pain everywhere, but anyway. Uh, so they, they put this into your back, like right above your hips. There's a spot, there's, it's the only place they can do this. It's a spot where like, I think your vertebra bend in a certain way when you're in that position that sort of opens a gap and they can, you know, stab it in there. Uh, and then what they do is they slowly move it around. <laughs> they, they slowly move it around trying to find the spinal cord and they do that. And really the person needs to be absolutely pro at this because the only way you know if you if you nailed it is that eventually you hear like a sound and that my friends is spinal fluid clear liquid leaving the tube and flying into the face of, <laughs> of the of the doctor i don't know unless unless you know of course not, not necessarily in their face i don't think they're like this but uh but uh, like you you see later that there's a whole splash of liquid everywhere. <laughs> uh, it's, it's some powerful stuff, let me tell you. Uh, and then, that's not enough. They, they keep moving it around. They're like, okay, I'm in. And then they're like, okay, uh, Mr. Farkas, I know it sounds really stupid and mean, but you're gonna have to tell us when you feel a slight electrocution feeling in, the, in, in, your, in your spine and your legs. And I'm like, what? Are you crazy? Like, you're going to hurt my spine. And they're like, no, no, no. We're not going to hurt it. Don't worry. We're being very delicate. I promise we're being super duper delicate. But, uh, but that's the only way we know we're actually, like, really in. And I'm like, oh, God. And so they start moving it around. And this, this is where I absolutely lose it. Like, they're like, of course, they say, please don't move please, for the love of God, don't move because then things can get complicated. So you're paralyzed, basically. Your, your mind shut off your muscles, you know, like you, you don't want to lose your legs. <laughs> so you're like, oh God, don't move. And already you start feeling this thing, which I can only describe as an ab absolute panic attack, but you can't do anything about it except cry. And I'm like, I was there crying, but I was, I didn't want to like, cry like in a way that moves you so i was i was sort of trying to cry without moving and i'm like i'm like doctors and, and this might sound funny but in the moment i was very serious <laughs> i was like doctors what if i crap my pants and they're like first of all you're not going to crap your pants okay <laughs> that's stupid that's never happened it's not going to happen and i'm like but what if i do like what what if i do and they're like if you do i swear to god no one's going to know about it and we don't care okay we're doctors we're professionals and we've seen worse <laughs> and that kind of calmed me down because I'm like if I have to I can but I didn't luckily and then I'm like doctors what if I have to puke and they're like if you have to puke just tell us and you know what we're gonna pull this thing out and you puke your guts out and everything's gonna be okay we're gonna do it again and I'm like I don't want that to happen so I really tried not to puke but I did feel nausea out of fear it was pure animalistic uh, fear like i remember i was sweating i was getting dizzy that the i had my eyes closed but the room was spinning and luckily my brother was there and he's like it's okay buddy like i'm here 
and I'm like, oh man, like I, this is it. Like I can't, this is, this is something I can't do. You know, like I really thought I can't do this. And they're like, we're almost done. We're almost done. And I'm like, oh God, like I'm going to, I'm going to pass out. And, and they're like, it's okay. It's okay. If you pass out, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. And I, I feel the, the electrocution thing. I'm like, there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I felt it. <laughs> Can I, can I move my legs? And I'm, they're like, don't move your legs, don't move your legs. And I'm like, what if, what if I can't? <laughs> and they're like, it's okay, it's okay. Trust me, we're almost done, we're almost done. We've already extracted the, the sample. We're, we only have to inject uh, some, some uh, chemotherapy, with a special drug from chemotherapy, and we have to inject some corticoids. And, and so they did it really quickly. I felt it, I felt it go in. It's like a, it's like a warm, it's like a warm poison feeling. It's imagine if something itchy, it, it, they injected something that makes it kind of itchy. It doesn't hurt, per se. It just sort of you it, it itched or something. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, like I was losing it. I was the room was spinning like crazy. I was I was uh, crying, and and then they pull it out and they're like hundred percent success, and and. And they put this like thing uh, because basically they made a huge hole in my back, you know. And of course, there's still fluid coming out, so they they put like a really strong bandaid on it uh, that like it's it's very hard to pull off. It's rather resistance and everything. And they're like, okay, now we have everything. It's injected. The chemotherapy is injected. Uh, so you're good. This was a complete success. We're now gonna have to run some tests. And, and, and I asked them, first, first of all, I lay down and they're like, you got to lay down like this for like minimum an hour. And I'd suggest two hours and you have to drink Coca-Cola or some coffee because the caffeine is going to help, uh, prevent certain side effects. So caffeine really helps with like possible huge headache that you can get after something like that because of, um, an imbalance in fluids in your spine and in your brain. So the caffeine really helps with that. So they're like, drink some Coke, a lot of Coke. Here's a can. <laughs> they even brought a can of Coke. And they're like, uh, here, uh, drink this and, and lay down for two hours. And then, and then I'm like, okay, uh, first of all, what tests are you going to do? And second, why, why did you give me chemo <laughs> into my spine? And they're like, okay, so basically uh, the, the leukemia that you have, uh, and in fact, all leukemia, but specifically the acute high risk one that you have now. Um, basically, the main thing it wants to do more than anything, the main thing is it wants to get to your brain. That's the one thing it wants more than anything. Like it, it, it loves being in your bone marrow, but it wants to get to your brain. So we have to check if any of the disease reach your spine and God forbid your brain. And I'm like, damn, like that's some tough stuff. Like how evil is this, is this uh, disease? It just sounds like something out of, you know, like an alien disease or something. It gets to your brain. Are you kidding me? Like what? And they're like, yeah, so now that's why we need to do this test. That's why it was so important and to do it as soon as possible. And it was so important to preventively put some chemo, even if you don't have anything, we're going to put some chemo into your spine from time to time so that we prevent anything from getting in there. And I was like, damn, thank God we did this. I was so, so proud that we got, oh, sorry, that we got through this. And I was like, oh man. And that was the scariest and still is one of, probably one of the scariest things I've ever had to do. Um, I, would, I would have to do this maybe eight more times. And uh, it was never easy, but it was never as hard as that first time. That first time was just terrible, absolutely terrible. And uh, to be fair, like, you know, I, as I said, it never gets easy, but uh, I noticed that it helps if the same doctor does it, because it, I think it's a psychological thing. It's a psychological thing where it's like, uh, Mm, it's like you know the guy and you know he hasn't screwed up and so you feel like sort of trust for him you know so yeah I got really lucky because uh, the guy that that does that did this to me was was very professional uh, really I'm, I'm very thankful to him he's, he's 
one, probably one of the best things that happened uh, in this whole ordeal that I had I had such a good um, such a good doctor taking care of me the whole team was very nice but that particular guy like especially something that gives me so much fear um, that was such a comfort like I kept looking for him and he's like dude don't worry like I'm gonna take care of it I'll do it and he always found a way even though he's you know super busy he always found a way to get to me whenever I needed uh, someone to you know do a stabby stabby <laughs> But yeah, that's so. That was uh, the amazing experience of getting stabbed in the back, <laughs> and um, as as you you heard, it's pretty much a horror story, and you know the f you can hear the fluid leaving the body and and things like that. Um, hold on, just a sec. Let me just. Uh, well, anyway, we're just gonna leave these things here. And you know there are many other hurdles that I, that I, that you go through, uh, like mm, I'm I'm thinking now. Sorry, I'm I'm a little slow today because my head really hurts. But uh, mm, other, you know, another scary thing is of course when they remove the bone marrow. But the bone marrow, the scary thing is more the waiting for the results. Mm. Like for example, they told me the results for the for the for the spinal fluid thing almost immediately and luckily there was nothing in there uh I, again like even though i got there in the last second remember uh like even the doctors were like it's a miracle you got here on time uh, the truth is uh, luckily my body resisted and my spinal fluid was not infected but it could have happened you know so um so, like, but then, you know, we still had to do the injections and we still had to do tests all the time because, you know, shit happens, I suppose. Yeah. Damn, sometimes I think back and I'm like, I'm a lucky guy. Again, yeah, this is another reason. I'm just a lucky, lucky, lucky individual. Whew, yeah. Another thing that ha that happens over time, uh, we still have time. Another thing that happens, which which it co goes into the whole psychology of, of what of this this thing, is that your your brain starts. You you know when you have a traumatizing event in your childhood and you sort of uh, you repress it. I think it's called repressed memory. That happened to me, and it happen it still like happens to me. Sometimes I find it hard to remember. Uh, certain events. I'm surprised I still remember that stabby stabby thing. Uh, maybe it's because uh, because I told myself don't ever forget this. Um, but for example, so let's say I was I was in the hospital for uh, from August all the way to November I think or or something like that. Yeah, pretty much November, and then they let me go for a week and then I had to go back. But within those first months. Um, a, a bunch of events happened like for example it was my girlfriend's birthday one of one of those days and I still to this day I have no idea what what happened on that day and even, in fact at some point maybe in December uh, I was thinking of a gift for for her for Christmas and I was thinking damn what can I get her what did I get her last time for her birthday and I'm like damn I didn't get her anything in fact, I didn't even see her on her birthday. And I'm like, oh crap, what a terrible boyfriend. Like I didn't even say happy birthday or anything. And I talked to her and she's like, yeah, you did. And I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah, we all, like my family, my entire family came to visit you. <laughs> I'm like, they came to visit me? How's that even possible? Like I was in a tiny room and they're like, yeah. Uh, we all came to visit you, and uh, you even gave me a gift and everything, and I still don't know what that gift was. I think she told me, but I don't remember, because of uh, memory repression. And to, to this day, I can't remember to the life of me. I have a vague memory of, of I think, 
Uh, sorry. Uh, I, I think I remember the sister being in 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 the room with uh, with my girlfriend, um, and maybe her mother was there. Pretty sure she was, and her brother. But I have I don't have memories. It's sort of I construct these memories to explain, you know, that this actually happened. So it's very weird. And uh, my brother and my mom often tell me things that happened. Like, oh, remember when this happened and that happened? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't remember any of that. Um, most of the time that I spent with my brother, because he was a lot of time with me in the hospital, most of that time I don't remember anything. And later on, there would be other traumatic events, which I'm going to get into. Uh, and again, um, I just don't remember it. I, I have no recollection. And that's kind of sad. I wish, um, I wish I could remember, but I can't. It's one of those melancholic episodes today. Mm. Another thing, you know, I, I'm going to talk about this next time. Uh, tr I have to actually think about what what things I have to talk about like by now I'm getting into like the deep deep meat of it but the problem is that the more I advance with the story the less I remember because it gets more and more tra not traumatic but um, repressed memory so sometimes I'm like okay yeah I know this happened and then something else happened but I don't remember and um, it's kind of hard so I'm gonna be paying more attention Paying more attention and thinking of um, and thinking of more uh, more things, more events that happened because I know things happened. I just I just don't remember them. I've, I've said this before. I I can I forget things sometimes. Okay. Do we have a? Hmm. I'm really hoping we find a, <laughs> uh, one of those fountains because we're running out of time now. Might have to uh, re-explore this behind the scenes. So yeah, um, just talking about Titan Quest a little bit. Um, we were in the Athens catacombs here. Uh, still on the lookout for... Um, we're looking for the source of these monsters. We're getting closer. Uh, as you can see, now that we're more, more powerful, we're sort of killing things way more easier. And I'm actually wondering when we're going to finish this. Probably, uh, maybe 20 episodes, I guess. If we get good drops, we can, we can finish this pretty easily. Uh, we're only going to go, I don't think we're going to do the expansions. I mean, unless you really want me to. Um, but I think, I think it would be a more appropriate ending if we just reach the end of the original Titan quest. Because it's epic. That ending is epic. Even the, the expansion, the first expansion, which is the only one I played. Even that expansion has an epic ending. But, but this ending is really nice. They may really make you feel like a hero. But you're going to see it, hopefully. I just don't know how long I can, uh, how many, uh, like... How long the story is going to last, like the, the story of, you know, my treatment and all that. But, um, but for sure, you know, we're going to finish this in the end of Titan Quest. And then, and then I'm going to start talking more about uh, more, more current games, you know. And I'm also still going to make uh, videos on, on sort of different topics, I think. I thought of a couple, uh, couple of topics that I think would be interesting and uh, as an agricultural engineer maybe I can shed some light on, on certain things that maybe some other people, you know, are not really, they don't really know too much about. There's lots of misinformation, you know. Um, hmm. So, okay, we're going to end it here. Oh, it's perfect. Thank you very much for watching. This was a sort of horror story slash melancholic episode. So, um, but still, I think it was really good. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.